Hi there. Happy New Year to everybody and welcome to our December fisheries feedback video. As usual, we'll be covering the work of our fisheries team led by Del Shackelford and Jim Stansfield. There will be a roundup of the notable fish caught from our waters during the month of December. Uh, this month we've got more fishing hints and tips for you. We're featuring a nice little video we shot down here at Farnham Flint with Steve Parker and, and friends at an Angling Trust pike match qualifier. Uh, this is all about how to avoid deep hooking pike. Um, coming up, you're going to be seeing some of our notable fish and pike inevitably at this time of year do feature quite heavily in that. And then Jim's going to be giving us some um, fishing prospects for the coming weeks. So now it's over to Dell uh, to tell us what's been happening with our waters over the last month and what plans he's got for the future. So Dale, what's been happening? Eating, drinking and being merry. <laughs> um, no, uh, on the on the fish that was a bit of it. To be fair, um, on the fisher sort of side of things, then you know we had three guys led by Jamie up at um, Ufton, and we've got a big work party up there at the end of the month on the 29th and 30th of the month. You know, be there or be square. Um, look out on Facebook because you know it, it'll be a good weekend, a good chance for everyone to see everybody and and, and you know just talk fishing. Um, yeah, so basically they cut a path, so it makes a, access a lot easier for the main work, which will be some sort of fairly heavyweight um, sort of tree work. So um, yeah, so thanks go to Eddie Hampton, one of the bailiffs, and Andy Dodd, uh, again one of the bailiffs, um, and obviously Jim, you know, because he he done it on his time off. He should have been at home being merry. And, and I think we also so. got Rob Tibble out, didn't we? Yes, I'm Rob Tibble. Now, you know, there, there's a the thing. I mean, good old Rob. I mean, he put a lot of younger guys to shame. You know, his energy and enthusiasm for fishing and, and all things fishing is second to none, you know. And uh, he's a great guy and he, he's, you know, he's a good sport. So, so let's just explain to people about that. This is after North Bank. That's right, uh, yeah. And you've already put in, because I went down there to see the guys, you've already put in some lovely styles to get over that fence so that people can fish that side. Yeah. This is about getting the access through to the bottom end of the fishery. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a much sort of neglected part of the Kennet. And, you know, it can produce some really good fish. And, and if you're prepared to put the... I mean, it's not an easy walk. Um, so, you know, if, if, if you're not too good on your feet it's probably not the sort of place you want to be going but certainly sort of the more agile sort of people then then it is it can be well worth it it's a cracking cracking venue oh well that's fantastic as, as we can see from the pictures they've done a really good job there and we'll finish the work at the uh, at the work party at the end of the uh, end of the month oh, i noticed we've got new platforms around the place as well yes huh? yeah um back in the summer um i had a phone call from the angling trust and you know they had a couple of uh Sort of what they call them level access platforms um, made out of this recycled plastic you know mm -hmm. so they'll probably outlive us um, it's a really good way of re reusing plastics and what have you that would ordinarily end up going into uh, you know landfill and I mean the other thing that they use a lot of these things for is the the line um, recycling thing mm -hmm. that that's what they're turned into so it's a really good thing yeah and the angling trust ads had a few of them going begging um phone me up if we could make any use of them and of course you know we'll always we'll always use stuff like that so we stuck we've got one on wilmots which is right next to the car park right next to the calf right next to the toilet so it's the ideal place you know, if you're a little bit shaky on your feet or whatever, you know, or, or you need some assistance from somebody, it's the perfect place to be put in, put in one. And we've got another one on Callows. And again, you know, the access is a little bit further, but it's all a good level path. You know, it's fairly easy to get to. And, you know, they're cracking, cracking bits of kit. Very, very expensive to buy, um, but cracking pieces of kit. And it was, it was quite amusing to be, because you know I've come from a building background, so I'm sort of fairly au fait with these sorts of things. But um, there was no instructions, so <laughs> we've got all these bits of plastic, and we go right. Where, where's it? and you know anybody that's worked on 1970s cars um, will always change an engine and go. Well, where did that bolt go? Whoa, and chuck it. And I, there was a bit of that going on. But um, they're in and they look great. And you know everyone sort of now wants us to go around and put them all the way around. But uh, I actually did price it to put those sorts of platforms all around Wilmot's and Callow's and it come up at 14 grand. 
But we won't, um, we, won't so, be so we won't be doing that in Laurie. You never know, in the future maybe, but so certainly it won't be happening just, just yet. Well, that's nice. And a, and a great boon for people who need to fish yeah, from wheelchairs yeah, exactly, or, or yeah, got, yeah. got those yeah. kind of uh, yeah. access issues. So we talked uh, in previous months about Wileys and, and the otter fence. There's been some developments there, yeah? Yeah, well, lack of really. Uh, yeah, we, we've come up with a bit of a, um, shall we say, technical issue. Um, I can't say too much about it, you know, because you know, I don't want to sort of put us into a, but we've had to put it on the on the back burner. Um, so unfortunately, yeah, we've got a a long road ahead of us before we can we can actually do it. But that doesn't mean to say that we're going to put it on the back burner and forget all about it. Um, there's a lot of stuff that goes on within running fisheries that people don't see and don't understand. Um, and this is one of them. Um, so we're, we're quite a way away from actually getting this fence up, but that doesn't mean to say that we've forgotten about it and it's not going to happen. It is going to happen. So we've just got some glitches to sort uh, out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, so Del, you're talking now about expanding our Kennet fishery ring capacity. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, as anyone that follows what we do, um, they'll be well aware of the roach project that we've been doing, um, which is proving to be reasonably successful. Um, still very early days, I mm -hmm. might add, but um, it's proving to be really um, successful. And <clears throat> what we're going to be doing, we've got this opportunity now, now that the Wiley stuff's been put to bed, well, not put to bed, put to one side, um, where we can bring forward our plan mm -hmm. to build a purpose-made, all singing, all dancing, commercial spec fish rearing facility. <clears throat> um, I think I certainly don't know of another club that have done, have done this. You know, um, now what we're going to be doing is it's going to be primarily river fish, so it's going to be your barbel, your chub, maybe dace, um, certainly roach. Roach will be included with it, mm -hmm. but we're we're just going to sort of broaden our horizons a little bit, um, and we're going to start ramping up our stocking process. Um, with the river, we've been doing it for five years now, and we're starting to see a little bit of a, a return for our efforts. Some people are, uh, are catching some smaller chub, um, some smaller barbel. Mm -hmm. So, and those are fish that we stocked maybe three, four years ago. Um, so now's the time. The habitat's right. We've got indicator species within within the the river that is saying that the habitat's right with our um, brown trout as mick debman will testify <laughs> um we've got brook lamprey and of course grayling and the grayling yeah. um, the grayling are proving to be a, a fantastic success mm -hmm. um you know there's grayling being caught in the lower river that hasn't happened for 30 years right so you know the, the time's right now so we're going to be ramping that up it's going to take a bit of investment and a lot of hard work um, over the over this next period of winter, if you like, and then into early sort of spring, um, and then we'll we're hoping to have it finished and complete and and up and running by the end of this year. That's fantastic news, and obviously we'll keep people updated through these yeah. uh, through these yeah. videos. Really, I suppose the, the, the last thing to, to just focus on is we've got the Friday Club uh, up and running again. Yes, yeah, the Friday Club's up and running again, um, and you know. You can do two things after Christmas. You can go on a crash diet or you can join a gym. Well, why do you want to join a gym when you can come to Redden District's gym? You know, save, save you 30 quid a month, come to a Friday club, we'll give you a bacon sandwich. Yeah, that'd be healthy. But you, we, we'll dab it with a bit of kitchen roll if you like. But you can work off those extra pounds, come along to the, to the Friday club. It's a good crack, everyone enjoys it. You know, there's a lot of talking and a lot of Mickey taking goes on, and it's it's a good day, and it helps us no end. Well, that's so. that's that, that's great to hear. So that's the 14th of January, 10 o'clock, uh, down here at the Farnham Flint Hut. And please make a note in your diaries um, at the end of the month, the weekend of the 29th and 30th of January, uh, Dell and Jim and myself and everyone else will be involved in a major work party uh, to finish the uh, act, opening up the access and opening up the swims on the River Kennet at Upton North Bank. So we hope to see as many of you there as we can.
Dell, the winner is? Well, the winner this month is Callum Davis with his pike from Whistling Mill. I mean, I, I've caught a few pike in my time. I've seen lots of pike being caught. And I don't think I've seen a prettier fish in a long, long, long time. Absolutely. And, you know, Callum's, not only has he had this pike from Whistling Mill, he's been catching some lure fish, um, lure caught chub, which is no mean feat in itself. You know, so it's not the fact that he's standing on a bank flogging it to death to try and catch. He's actually moving around. He's searching for different species. Yeah. And he's, every, he's everything that a, a good angler should be. You know, so well done, Callum. Um, you need to let us know uh, whether you want a carp fishing um, pack, if you like, or a coarse fishing pack, which has been kindly donated by Rod Hutchinson um, Bait and Tackle. Um, let us know via Messenger which one you want to choose. And of course, the very exclusive Redden District cap, which on your next photos, I want to see you wearing. Well, that's really, really good news. And well done, Callum. Great to see a young angler performing so well. And of course, we had some other uh, lovely fish there. I, I was very impressed by Leo Davies' uh, carp. I mean, Leo posts a lot on Facebook. Yes, he does, yeah. Incredibly enthusiastic angler. But that was, that was the, probably one of the biggest carp I've seen uh, yeah, out of Wilmot's. Yeah, yeah, certainly. I mean, you know, when, when you think they, the first stocking of Wilmot's was probably two years ago. Um, and they went in there as sort of six inch fish. You know, some of them are really sort of packing it on. I mean, that, that's a 40 pounder in the future without a shadow of doubt. And, you know, Leo can turn around and say, you know, when, he, when he's a little bit older, I caught that. Absolutely. You know? So uh, yeah, he's, he's classic. He, he's got the right attitude as well, Leo. You know, he, nice. he's very enthusiastic and he, he's doing it for all the right reasons, which is fantastic to see. I was also, uh, really pleased to see uh, some of those big barbel coming out in the, in the mild period. I mean, uh, Jem Fox inevitably has, uh, has been catching uh, has been catching some great fish. Um, there's been a number of other double figure barbel, and of course some some have actually come out after the month of December in the mild period in the new year. So yeah. it's good to see those. I yeah. mean, they're, they're hard fought fish, but uh, are hard to come by. But yeah. good to see big barbel showing, and, and of course some cracking chub as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the, it's it's refreshing to see. You know, we like to see um, stuff going on Facebook, particularly the barbel and the chub, and any any river fish really, because that's how we gauge how much is in the river. You know, as much as anything else. And sea fish, particularly this time of the year, I know it's been a bit exceptional with this milder weather. But you know, if you're if you're sat at home, you know, bored to death, um, and you're itching to get out fishing, just pick a couple of days where the temperatures are up a little bit, and you know, get out there. You're not going to catch them indoors, so you know, get out there. Our Facebook page shows you that it's doable, and you know, well done to all those guys. Keep them coming. Right, Jim, so in these cold months, where, what sort of species would you recommend targeting? So I'd say in the months of January, we're definitely looking at chub. That's going to be top of the list, I'd say. Um, also, your pike and your barbel is going to be this month, I'd say. OK, good advice. Where on the Reading Waters would you recommend people try for chub uh, this time of year? Um, so Reading Waters, all of the Kennet stretches hold good chub in them, um, especially the Thames as well. Uh, the Thames at Northmore can be a very good shout for them. It's a bit of a walk over there, but if you travel light, sort of fish a peg for a few hours or so and give it a go, just moving about, you can do really well up there. Um, also the Loddon, there's been a few chub showing up there in the last month. Um, now the sort of river's rising a bit and dropping out. When, it, when the river's dropping off, get up on the Loddon, and you can have good afternoon's chub fishing up there. And of course the weeds uh, growing uh, going out this time of year, yes, which makes yeah. it a lot easier. Yeah, the it? weeds died off right up there now. And pike, you mentioned pike. Uh, obviously we've seen some good pike in our notable fish uh, uh, gallery this month. What, uh, what are the reading venues would you recommend for pike? Um, so for pike, uh, from the Facebook page what I've seen, um, Sonnen's been fishing really well for pike at the moment. Um, and also Farnham Flint. Um, obviously the Anglin Trust had their pike qualifier match over here and they got on quite well over here. So. I'd say Sonnen and Farnham Flint. Excellent. And of course, we can't but fail to mention some of the big barbel that have been coming out. Uh, January, to me, was always an iffy month for barbel, but they are still a viable target, aren't mm. they? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, for barbel, I'd say, again, anywhere along the Kennet stretches, you can pick up barbel. Um, I would make sure you sort of fish that sort of hour into dark as well, if you can, because some of those bites can come right on the cusp of darkness. So make sure you st stick it out for a little bit. I know it's cold, but give it a go. 
but you would recommend going uh, picking the milder days when the water temperature is rising. Yeah, right? yeah, def definitely. W w pick those sort of milder evenings, and maybe if it's been mild for a couple of days before that, will just rise that river te temperature just slightly enough, and hopefully they'll be on the feed. Well, that's really useful. Uh, so thanks very much for that, Jim, and uh, let's see what the members catch this month. Yeah, hopefully they'll have a few. Thank you. Okay, well, I hope you found that useful. Um, the weather's a bit parky at the moment, so wrap up warm out there and tight lines for 2022.